It's the Royal Oak Show with Carlo Giannotti. Tonight's guest, Royal Oak School Superintendent Tom Moline. Local historian, Ruth Cleveland. And now, Carlo Giannotti. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, welcome back to the Royal Oak Show. Until further notice, I'm still the host of this show. You all have just heard from Andy Aubrey, the official Royal Oak Show uh, announcer. Before I get into the guests uh, tonight and tell you a little bit about the show, I, I, I wanted to, Andy, did you hear from the, uh, the local home office in Parma, Ohio? Uh, did you get the memo this morning? I believe I did, Carl. Okay, well, the memo, uh, if you didn't see it, let me, uh, let me read it to you. It says that uh, since the last showing, there have, they have been inundated. Yes, inundated was the term they used uh, with uh, phone calls, emails. Uh, the phones are ringing off the hook uh, from people all over the country who have seen the show and they've called the, uh, the headquarters to uh, tell us uh, what they think about this show. Now, the great thing is, uh, despite all those calls, they're going to let us continue for at least one more taping. <laughs> so I didn't know if you got that email or not, uh, Andy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a uh, great show tonight. Uh, as usual, we have uh, a star-studded show tonight. Our first guest is uh, Tom Moline, the superintendent of the Royal Oak Neighborhood Schools, who's going to come out and tell us about the great things that... Uh, that are happening in and around uh, Royal Oak as it relates to the schools. And then we're going to have, uh, we're going to hear from uh, Ruth Cleveland, our local uh, historian, who's going to give us a glimpse back in time uh, about Royal Oak, and she's going to tell us uh, some other interesting tidbits as well. And speaking of uh, glimpses, I'm going to turn it over now to uh, Andy Aubrey, who's going to give us a glimpse into the future about some of the exciting things that are happening in this great city of ours, Royal Oak. Andy, take it away. Well, the Royal Oak Public Library invites kids to come and create with it. You can click on the RoyalOakShow.com to connect with a, the city and the many organizations right here. Carlo, I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you. Thank you. And may I, if I, if I may, just for a you moment, may, uh, you may. after our last show, we uh, have, if we can get this on camera, this is a picture of Carl we have not, not over there. That's Chauncey Billups and Chris Weber. <laughs> But uh, this guy right here, Carlo Giannotti, and then you go inside, and there's even more Carlo Giannotti right, right there. And so you've become quite the local celebrity, Carlo. And well, you, you had me concerned there. I thought uh, when you were holding that picture up, it said defendant uh, claims innocence. I thought well, I, I was trying to put my finger over that, but I assume you've been invited to all the parties now, and we were just kind of curious what it's like to attend a, a bash with the Paris Hiltons and the Britney Spears of the world. And uh, one of these days when my parents aren't in the audience, I'll let you know what that's like. <laughs> but again, this show isn't about uh, just me. It's about all the, uh, the wonderful things that are happening here uh, in and around the city of Royal Oak. And uh, with that, uh, how's that for an introduction? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to uh, announce our first guest uh, for tonight, the superintendent of the Royal Oak Neighborhood Schools, Mr. Tom Moline. Tom, welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Have a seat and give yourself uh, comfortable. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming, uh, Tom. I, it's, a, it's an honor uh, for me to have you on this uh, show. You're, you're following guests uh, such as uh, Mayor Jim Ellison, who, uh, as big you know, is a big, big shoes, shoes to, to fill. fill. Yes. And, uh, but I'm sure you're going to be able to do it tonight. Uh, Tom, you are the uh, superintendent of the Royal Oak uh, Neighborhood Schools. And of course, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But what, uh, what does a superintendent uh, do, and what are your responsibilities? Um, meetings and meetings and more meetings. <laughs> and lots um, of meetings. And lots of meetings, Carlo. Um, uh, not uh, unlike a, a mayor or a, a city commissioner. Um, uh, there's a, a lot of activity in Royal Oak, and uh, I think maybe this current superintendency is a little extraordinary. And I don't mean to, um, to elevate the position. It's just that there's a lot going on in the school district in the, Royal Oak right There now. certainly is. There, so I, there's lots of meetings. I, well, I, I think a lot of people <laughs> think that perhaps maybe a superintendent is a... Uh, uh, a nine to five job and I know that uh, I know you and I know that that's not the case in fact you've had a pretty full weekend this weekend haven't you uh, yes um, and that's some of the peripheral work with uh, being a community member too but uh, I had a lot of fun uh, this weekend with a, a fundraiser for the uh, murals restoration and uh, it was combined with an honor flight uh, uh, activity that we're doing, sending veterans to the uh, World War II Memorial. You're and, referring, uh, of course, to the swing dance that was The, held the big swing dance, yeah. yeah. And then the, uh, the uh, Historical Society was also a benefit. The museum uh, was also a beneficiary of that. I heard it and, was a uh, great event, and I, 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 I understand uh, you hopefully we'll continue on with those uh, types of events. We hope so. We hope so. It, uh, 
it was one that uh, uh, took a lot of effort from a lot of people in the community, and uh, it turned out to be a, a good productive fundraiser. Uh, they're already talking about doing it again next year. Well, that's so, good. Uh, that's good. We'll have to make sure we get that in our calendar. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tom, you you came to Royal Oak uh, how many years ago now? Uh, it seems like a few years ago. No, I've only been in Royal Oak one and a half years in, in the position of superintendent. And, and prior to that time, where were you at that point? Uh, four years as superintendent in my hometown of uh, Clara, Michigan. And uh, uh, actually, I, I lived just about uh, consistently in the central Michigan area. I worked for Midland uh, Schools for 14 years, but uh, kept uh, the Clara area as my home base uh, during about five different jobs uh, as a teacher and as an administrator. Well, I, I think I speak for the entire community and that uh, we're very fortunate to have you here with us. Well, thank you. Um, thank you. I, I would imagine that when you were looking uh, to make the move and, and perhaps uh, come to another school district that there were things about Royal Oak that attracted you to this area. What were some of those things? Restaurants. Restaurants. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, that's why we keep <laughs> bringing restaurants in so we, can, uh, we don't lose you then. So, uh. um, just the entire scene. When, when I went to the downtown area in Royal Oak and my family, we were wowed by the fact that, uh, that it uh, uh, was number one, about eight city blocks long, because we were used to two blocks long in Clare, Michigan, uh, uh, that you had a Barnes & Noble anchored at the, uh, the end of the uh, street, and uh, again, restaurants and restaurants and more restaurants, uh, uh, and just a lot of activity that surrounded it, and just that far away from the core of Detroit, you know, so... Uh, it was very attractive for us. I, I'm sure you probably did a little research on our town, and uh, uh, you, you probably checked into the community, the, uh, the, the parental involvement. Uh, have, have we let you down in any way? Not at all. Not at all. Royal Oak was known all across the state uh, for many years as being an exemplary school district. Uh, uh, the prestige of being the superintendent is one that I uh, enjoy going into other superintendents' uh, meetings around the state. Uh, uh, they've heard about it. You've had a couple of superintendents prior who set the pace for me uh, to try and keep up with. But the, uh, the amount of student achievement, um, the, the quality of the teaching, uh, it's been known throughout the state for actually decades. Well, in just a few minutes, I'm going to have you uh, talk about some of the achievements that uh, you're most proud of. In the meantime, we're going to take a little break. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. We'll be right back with uh, Superintendent Tom Moline. Royal Oaks Show, of course, for those of you who've just turned in, we've got uh, Superintendent Tom Moline with us. Tom, we could probably talk for hours about the achievements of the school board and your uh, successes here, uh, but uh, and hopefully maybe you'd come back on a different show, but I'd like to touch on a few things that you're most proud of. I mean, I don't think a conversation uh, would be complete if we didn't talk about the consolidation sure. of, of the middle schools and of course, the high schools and what a success that's been. Um, can, you, can you tell us some, some of the high points of that? Yeah, well, I, I came into the consolidation, uh, I think at the midpoint. A lot of the thought about what had to be done uh, was done before I ever landed in Royal Oak. And uh, I give credit to a lot of the people in the community who thought this whole thing up back about two to three years ago before I came here. Uh, they set the plan. I, I'm the lucky when I got to implement it. But uh, um, the whole process of... Uh, of consolidating was something that uh, a large segment of the community without uh, any administration, without any board of education, uh, putting this together. And uh, I think I kept it pretty clean and pretty saleable to the community when they saw that there was no uh, vested interest, so to speak, in, in the process. But uh, uh, the consolidation of the high school has gone very well. Do you uh, think that how smoothly that, that whole thing has gone? And it has, by the way. I mean, I know that there were probably administrative uh, mix-ups behind the scenes, but yeah. for the average person on the street, I don't think we saw um, even a, a skip step. Would Would you like to see that whole uh, uh, procedure set the tone for the consolidation of the other of the middle schools? No, it's it's going, um, and I think uh, we're following the pattern. Maybe not as elaborate uh, for the middle schools, but uh, uh, our two middle schools come together uh, to the former Don Darrow location, Royal Oak Middle School, and. Uh, they will enter a beautifully restored facility uh, at that location. It's, it's going to be a state-of-the-art facility, and uh, uh, having the history of the past and all of the technology of the present, uh, uh, it is going to be one stellar location. And then our elementaries uh, do fold. Uh, we go to six elementaries next year, and uh, we're using our larger facilities, uh, two of those were middle schools, to open them up as, uh, as theme schools, so to speak, uh, with some specialized um, offerings in those two locations to uh, 
to continue to make uh, Royal Oak attractive to parents of young children just coming into the school district. And that, that's something certainly that we all need. Whatever benefits the schools benefits the community, and I, and I, I think we all know that firsthand. You've got a, a, a couple programs that you alluded to, and I know that one that you're particularly proud of is the baccalaureate program mm -hmm. at Keller. Mm -hmm. Can you can you tell us uh, sure. something about that? And, and, and it's it's international as well. I, it is, it is. Uh, the Keller, what we could call the Keller International School, starts in the fall. And uh, it's really uh, based on a curriculum which is uh, ascribed to by nations, not just our nation, but it's an international curriculum. The focus is on uh, other cultures, the understanding of other societies, uh, the ability to even practice some of that in terms of uh, second language. And uh, we hopefully uh, will have that as a major attraction in our community uh, at that location. It's called the Primary Years Program. And uh, from there, uh, there could be a springboard to what's called the Middle Years. And then, of course, the Diploma Program, which we currently subscribe to up at uh, Bloomfield Hills. We send uh, a small number of students uh, to the high school program there. So that, that's already there um, and in place, uh, though we could expand on that back at Royal Oak High School if we wanted to in the future. Well, that, that's, that's certainly a, a, a great program, and I'm, I'm looking forward to hear uh, more about that as time goes on. Um, you have had uh, some challenges in the, in the community, um, but uh, in a, on a stress rate from, uh, from 1 to 10, how would you rate your job? I mean, I, I know you have a lot of good people next to you and behind you, but uh, you're basically getting into some, uh, some new uh, groundbreaking uh, territory here, if I'm correct. Maybe so, Carlo, but uh, I think maybe jobs in the past where I felt virtually alone were more stressful. Um, I was Midland's Director of Special Education for 10 years, and at times uh, felt like um, you know, I was paddling upstream by myself. Here in Royal Oak, if somebody comes up with an idea, there's always a group of people to help you do it. Um, so I probably feel more relaxed in this position than probably any administrative position I've ever had. Not that there's a lot, not a lot of work to it, but uh, I just have a lot of company and a lot of good intentioned people who, uh, who do more and uh, don't have to say much once we put something uh, together, once we get a plan together. I, I know one of the first guests we had was, uh, of course, Jim Ellison. I'm, I'm giving him another plug so he'll treat me nicely on Monday night. But uh, one of the things that uh, he, he said, and I think it rings true for anybody who belongs to this community, is that it, it truly is a community. It truly is a, uh, a sharing and caring uh, group of people Absolutely. Here. Yeah. And that, my, my that wife and I, my sons, uh, have all um, picked up on that. You have uh, children in the system as well. I have a son who goes to Royal Oak High School. He's a junior. And then uh, Matt, soon to be 20, uh, coming up this week, uh, goes to Oakland Community College. And uh, they've all um, got core peer networks that uh, I'm amazed in a year and a half just how tight they are uh, with people. And uh, the thought of uh, having left Central Michigan before, um, um, well, they don't even return some of the calls back anymore. Uh, they're, they're Royal Oakers now, and that's just the way it is. Well, that's good, and we're glad to have you. Tom, I'll, I'll let you go, but you've got to promise to come back again if that's okay. Yeah, I'd like to, sure. All right. Sure. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be right back with uh, Royal Oak's own Ruth Cleveland. Thank you very much, Tom. Thanks so much. Join us on the next Royal Oak Show when Carlo visits Good with leader dog trainers Sarah Stevens and... Mommy Rock Sensation, the My Dolls. The Royal Oak Show will return in a moment. Stay tuned. Okay, thank you very much and welcome back uh, to the second segment of the Royal Oak Show. Tonight uh, we have the honor of having uh, a very special person with us tonight. Uh, you know her as Ruth Cleveland. Uh, many of us know her as many different things. And tonight she's going to give us a little insight into uh, uh, not only the past of Royal Oak, but maybe the past uh, of uh, Ruth herself. Ladies and gentlemen, I, of course I'm referring to uh, Ruth Cleveland and there's an excellent book out here that I would urge all of you to uh, uh, to search out and, and buy. It is Royal Oak Images, Yesterday's Charm, Today's Treasure. And in just a moment we're going to uh, give you a little bit of information um, about uh, the book itself and uh, some of the authors, the contributors here. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, at this point, I would like to introduce to you Ms. Ruth Cleveland. Watch your step, Ruth. How are you? Thank you for coming. Have a seat. How are you tonight? I'm just fine. Well, thank you very much for coming on. I've been looking forward to this interview for quite some time. Um, as you know, I'm kind of a 
a history buff myself, and I followed uh, uh, what you've been doing. Now, Ruth, I've uh, I told I said that you are obviously one of the contributors. There were other yes. people um, who had played a, a major role, and I know you the way that you. Uh, you are, you'd like to give them a little credit at this point, is that? Absolutely. Could you tell us a little bit about the book and about the collaboration and some of those people? Yes, uh, the book was actually the product of the uh, round table of historical organizations. In other words, representatives from the different historical groups in Royal Oak. And uh, it happened that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Mrs. Rondo brought a copy of the book from Farmington which showed uh, houses and a very brief outline. You're talking about Barbara Rondo? Yes. Okay. And when we looked at that, we thought perhaps that we could do this for Royal Oak. And I, I've, I've looked at the book, um, and it is, it's a great piece of work here. And if, if people were uh, interested in getting a copy, we're going to tell them where to do that. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about Ruth Cleveland on the first, uh, uh, first section here. Um, there's. People don't know that you're actually uh, you're, you're, you're a nurse by profession, is that correct? Yes. And you went to Wayne State uh, Nursing School? Yes. Um, about a 10, 15 years ago, correct? Oh, <laughs> a few more years than that. Thank you've, you very you've much. You've lived in Royal Oak for <laughs> 50 years. 50 years. That's, yeah. a, that's great, and we're glad to have you here. Thank you. I, you know, you and I have a lot in common. I don't, other than being uh, uh, very excited about living in Royal Oak, uh, you worked at Highland Park General Hospital, is that correct? Yes. And I know that some of the greatest and most famous people in the world were born at, at uh, Highland Park General Absolutely. Hospital. Absolutely. Yes. Um, you were there uh, for about 22 years, I yes. understand. And, and what did yeah. you do at uh, Highland Park General? I began my nursing career. Well, actually, I was born at, in Highland Park we at that more, hospital. We have a lot in common then. Yes. <laughs> and my dad was a doctor there, and my mother a nurse, and then eventually I went in training. And uh, I graduated from there and worked for all those years. And I started out as a staff nurse and eventually wound up being the director of nursing. For 22 years you did that. that was, yeah. Yeah. And, and for those uh, people out there who may not know, Highland Park uh, many years ago was a city much like Royal Oak is today. Is that yes. correct? A beautiful, yes. beautiful, beautiful community. Beautiful community. And, hi and the, the hospital where you worked was one of the first in the country, I think, uh, was owned and operated by the city, which yes. was un very unusual for that yes. time. And, and Ruth, I, I don't want to embarrass you, but you, from there, you, you went to, uh, you left Highland Park and you went to, uh, to Lansing, correct? Yes. And you took some of your management skills. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about the different times back then when you were head of the nursing department in Lansing. Well, they had just opened up a brand new hospital, Ingham Medical, and uh, they were still in the stages of needing to develop the policies and procedures for the nursing department because it had been the Ingham Chest Hospital. And with the new hospital, they had all the services. So those had to be developed. And it was a wonderful staff. Uh, you you kind of took over that, if, if, I, if I could, <coughs> if I remember talking to you. You took that over. And back then, you know, most of the nurses were, were women, of course, correct? Yes. And most of the women had uh, homes and children. And, and you did something that was very unique back then. I don't think a lot of people know that you, you, you use certain of your management skills and, and help com, uh, create the first flex time, if you will. Yes, uh, learning that so many of the women had young families and that they really couldn't work full time. We devised a program whereby a nurse could work four days one week and three days the following week. And she had a buddy, and that buddy worked the opposite number of days. And they depended on each other if they had to have a day off or they had to call in or something. And that worked out much better for them because then they didn't have to work the full five days or 40 hour week or whatever you so want to So they could call spend it. more time with their yes. family, of course. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was groundbreaking stuff back then, was it not? Yes. And I know you're probably embarrassed. I know you don't like to talk uh -huh. too much about no. yourself, but, no. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's my show. So <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> whatever you say. No, it, it worked out wonderfully for them, yeah, and well, I was good. proud of that. Now, when we come back, we're going to take a quick break here, but when we come back, I want to get into what, uh, what your, your true passion is, and that is the true passion of Royal Oak, and we're going to talk about uh, some of the things that uh, you've done and some of the things that you, you'd like to do. So in the meantime, you, you sit down, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. We're going to be right back with Ruth Cleveland in just a few moments. Thank you very much. 
All right, thank you very, very much. And again, for those of you who just tuned in, we have uh, the pleasure of talking with Ruth Cleveland, uh, our very own historian and, and many different uh, things. Uh, Ruth, welcome back. You Thank really you. couldn't go anywhere anyway. So, no, I'm <laughs> now, Ruth, we before the break, we uh, we were talking about the fact that you've been here in Royal Oak for 50 years, and you moved into a home, um, and you've been in that same home that the entire time. Is that correct? No, 10 years in one, and 40 years in the present one. But you've been 40 years in the present home yes. right now, and um, that is a home that has some historic value, not only to you but to the people of Royal Oak. Is that correct? We hope so. Yes. Well, I'm going to show you on page uh, 129, and, and by the way, this is an excellent book. Thank um, you. On page 129, the uh, you have the distinction of having a house that has its own name. Yes. The McDowell House. Yes. It's like the Gennady House, but uh, yeah. <laughs> on page 129, you're going to see a picture of the uh, McDowell House, which is the home that uh, Ruth lives in. And um, as we are speaking, it is going through the uh, the process of uh, becoming a historical. Um, designation is that yes. correct all right yes and that's going to happen soon we hope yes now Ruth um, again the the um, contributors in this book there were, were several others and would you would you mind if I mentioned uh, the other please um, this book was uh, uh, put together by Barbara Randall who is I believe in our audience today Owen Perkins Karen Crawford yourself uh, Lois Lance and uh, mr. William Sull Sullivan of course of the yes. Sullivan family um, and uh, you told me that before I came on the show that uh, the only way that you would come on the show is if I bought one of your books, and it's been a—I've been pl planning to buy one for a very long time. So I'll tell you what: can I keep this book? You can have that book as and you long can as have I this get check. this. Book. All right. <laughs> Thank and if, you. And if uh, people want to buy the book, you, they're going fast. I understand. Yes, very fast. And the, the entire book. The, and again, ladies and gentlemen, the book is yeah. Royal Oak Images: Yesterday's Charm. Uh, today's treasure and it is a fascinating book uh, and I'm sure that if you if people were to thumb through this book they're gonna find uh, very familiar places some that aren't too familiar but it's gonna give everyone a chance to, to go out and uh, get to know Royal Oak a little better is that uh, yes how, how much of, did you enjoy putting this helping with this book this was wonderful mainly because it was a team effort and I have, I'm used to being a team player and this was a real team effort and how, how long did it take uh, for this book to it's come? It's taken to close to four years, three and a half to four years, depending on, you know, there was, you start and you stop and you have to, you know, go back sometimes and look at things. But uh, it was uh, just, it flowed very, very smoothly and everybody did everything they were supposed to. Now, how does a building or a, or a structure get into this book? Not well, this, obviously too late now, but if it's not in yeah. there. Yeah, well, but, we, we broke the city down into segments. And then each of us took a segment and went out and took photographs. And then we had to decide which of those 800 plus photographs we were going to put in the book because we, were, we could only put in so much because uh, that was the amount of money that we had, you know, for publishing. So once that was decided, then we had to interview people, we had to do research, and we had to do all the writing, and then put it all together. And for each one of these houses or each one of these structures, there's a lot of research that went into it. So this is the real deal, so to, yes. as the kids nowadays yes. say. And if, um, how much, what kind of sources did you rely on for your research? Well, it depended. You could use an abstract. You could use uh, the people themselves in the interviews, because many people knew about their homes. Uh, there were details that you could observe. You could go to the county. You could go to the city records. There were many places that you could go. Oh. Well, Ruth, I'm going to look forward. I'm going to take this home and read Good. it tonight, and I'm going to commit it to memory. But uh, Good. thank you very much, and thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruth Cleveland, and uh, stay tuned uh, for the next ta taping where we have the My Dolls, and we have uh, Sarah Stevens from the Little Dogs for the Blind. That will be at our next show. Until that time, thank you very much for coming to the Royal Oak Show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to have you.